welcome back to the channel, my friends. I'm excited to today to talk to you a little bit about the Stormcast Eternals. Now, I have to admit that as a huge fan of Old Hammer, as they call it, the uh, square bases and the metal models that I used to play with as a kid, I was a little bit butthurt is uh, a great way to describe it when Games Workshop decided to kill the old world and create Age of Sigmar. And only now, in 2023, have I decided to put old grudges, I'm like an old bitter longbeard, to push those old grudges aside and finally get into Age of Sigmar. And over the holidays, I got my hands on the new Dominion box set for Age of Sigmar. And I'm finally gonna get into it and I'm gonna build my first Age of Sigmar army. Though I have to say that when I do play games at home or with friends, I still generally gravitate towards the one-page rules rule set, which I will link below. Um, a great, simple rule set for people like me who are not interested in uh, the rule bloating. Uh, now, so... The Stormcast Eternals, though, are pretty cool. If you are familiar with the history of the old world from Warhammer, there definitely is a balance of power leaning towards uh, however you want to call the bad guys or the, the powers of chaos. And the forces of order, the humans, the dwarves, the elves, the good guys, so to speak, are kind of always a little bit behind and obviously in the end spoiler they lose now the stormcast eternals are a little bit different at least for me and interesting because these are the ultimate power of good the ultimate uh like the heavenly host of the setting so to speak so i'm going to read to you a little bit here from the online Age of Sigmar wiki, and it reads as follows. The heavens roar, and the sky itself is rent by searing bolts from above. With a flash of lightning and rolling thunderclap, the gleaming war hosts of the Stormcast Eternals arrive for battle. Their weapons wreathed in crackling arcs of lightning. The Stormcast launch their assault. It is as swift as it is brutal. Heavy hammers rise and fall. A shield-shattering onslaught that batters down all who stand before it. So, pretty interesting. Very cool lore. And I'm ready to get into it. So, we're not just going to build the box set though. I'm a maniac, and I'm going to 3D print a few more little dudes to bolster my units a little bit. So, searching on mymainfactory.com, I have stumbled across some models that are pretty cool. Now, they are still very stormcasty. They have that Balthazar gilt mask, and they have kind of leaned into the Greek Spartan uh, warrior vibe. And I've got a bunch of different units from uh, this artist. It's called Gamma. And I'm going to put a link to these STL files below so that if you like these guys, you can uh, get them too. So here I've put together the units from the set. I've 3D printed some stuff too. You can see there's a little owl. We have the good boy here. So we've added some of the 3D printed elements to the original set. We got everybody based. 
we're going to uh, also add some of these uh, crossbow boys too. Now, I've taken some of the 3D printed models and I'm just playing around with some color schemes. Um, trying to see where I want to go with these guys. And I've decided to lean into the three color rule. And this is the first scheme that I'm going for. It's this blue, red, and teal slash turquoise type of vibe. So to get this uh, little uh, paint scheme that I've come up with here, I got my wet palette out and I've just basically initially based the miniatures in a cheap just regular plain old blue craft paint um, really thin watered it down put it into the wet palette uh, so I'm not obscuring the details too much and now I've taken out this light blue from Army Painter and uh, my dry brush and I'm going to hit the details that are raised above on the miniatures. And you'll see that I have a good little mixture here. I think you get four of the Hammer Boys in the Dominion box set. And I think I've printed like six more of the boys. So I've got most of the paint off of my dry brush here. Um, this is one of those dollar store makeup brushes, which are really amazing for a dry brush cheap. Um, I've wiped most of the paint off and I'm trying to hit the top and uh, imitate where the light would hit. And not too much so that the blue from the base coat still shows through um, and also in case we miss that footage I don't think it's included on here these guys are airbrush primed in black so now I'm picking out a few spots on the armor some of the weapons some of the boots and I'm switching it up on different models and I'm painting these details red, creating a little bit of variance, though still relying heavily on the color scheme on that blue. And this is an army painter red as well. Um, I'm really enjoying army painter products. Uh, their paints are great. Um, I'm also just got some Vallejo paints as well, and I'm enjoying those. Um, and uh, I think they all kind of have their strengths and their weaknesses and their uh, purpose in the hobby. And uh, I'm grateful that I can uh, have them all. And yeah, so we've just picked out this guy's little shoulder pad and we're doing a really nice watered down red and we're gonna hit that with two thin coats and hit different spots on the miniatures and you can see here where I've chosen different parts of each to kind of make these guys look like they're a unit, to make them look like they are in the same gang, the same crew. Yeah, and there they are. Some nice little hammer boys. And I'm taking this army painter flesh shade, um, which is kind of like an off-white Caucasian orangey kind of flesh and I'm dry brushing that over the red 
but just kind of doll that red down a little bit. Make it look a little bit kind of aged. Armor shouldn't look uh, perfect. Armor should look like it's been through some, some things. It's been through the works. So yeah, we're hitting it. A little dry brush. Focusing on those those edges. It's kind of getting ourselves an easy edge highlight here. Picking out the details. These cool shields. It says Sigmar on the shield. It's a really cool model. I'm digging uh, from what I've seen on uh, from Age of Sigmar so far. I don't really like to buy directly the new stuff from Games Workshop. It's uh, much too pricey for my blood. Um, but I find good stuff on eBay sometimes. Um, this the minion box set was only a hundred dollars uh, for a holiday sale. I think that's like fifty percent off the original uh, MSRP. I could I could be wrong. I think it was like two fifty when it first came out, and I still haven't even touched the the orc models either in that box set. Those guys look cool. Um, but yeah, we're gonna have some more videos uh, coming up on the channel too as I paint uh, the the whole of this box set. I you know I think when you get these big army boxes it it's definitely intimidating at first to have so many models to paint um, do it like this split it up into units do one unit at a time make it digestible but yeah same thing we've done the turquoise now two thin coats picking out little areas and then finding a lighter shade uh, which, you know, just adding a little bit of white to the, the original uh, shade and, and doing a dry brush on that. Getting those, those uh, details. Real simple uh, paint job here. The, the three colors uh, tabletop ready, uh, standard as they say. Now we just got a light brown and I'm uh, just hitting the edge here, cleaning up the, the base. And uh, these 3D printed bases are actually not from uh, the designer of the, um, the models. They're actually from One Page Rules. Um, really cool bases. I've been subscribed to them for a long time. I'll put them in the link too. Um, yeah, a little tacky glue here. And we're just putting those tufts on there. Little tufts always uh, do a lot to... Um, I think the, the biggest thing is it lets you know the scale. It uh, places the model where it should be. We know what grass looks like. We can kind of, we can kind of see how big in our mind's eye uh, the, the, the model's supposed to be. So here, we've just uh, got a little nice uh, light blue. We've taken that light blue, added a little bit of white, mixed it up, and we're just hitting uh, the details, hitting the very tops, um, picking out the details, getting a very kind of cheap, poor man's edge highlight. And then last but not least, I take this uh, neon uh, Vallejo, like electric blue, really cool color. Love this uh, neon color, especially on a sort of like fantasy miniature. I love that juxtapose. So there you have it. That's uh, all we did for these guys. And I want to thank you all for joining me today on my channel. And uh, here's some cool footage of these hammer boys on the table. Enjoy.